Hello everyone, this is my project presentation at the University of Florida for my course Image Processing and Computer Vision and the project's name is Object Detection and Tracking using CamShift and KLT Algorithm and an Android application that tracks human faces and facial features. Introduction Tracking is an application that is of immense importance in today's world. It finds its use in almost everything in day-to-day -day life like security, traffic monitoring, toll collection, surveillance, videography, virtual reality games, etc. This project describes how two such tracking algorithms and an Android app that exploits the tracking algorithms. The CamShot algorithm. The continuously adaptive mean shift algorithm or the CamShot algorithm is an advancement of the mean shift algorithm for object tracking that is used as a step towards face and head tracking for perceptual user interface. It is a reliable way of tracking objects whose appearance is defined by color and it, the color doesn't change over time. It could also use edge detection or texture detection. But why do we use CamShot algorithm instead of mean sheet algorithm? The mean sheet algorithm had a dependency. It had a fixed window size. So the region of interest which we want to track could either fit into the window size or could be too large for the window size or it can be too small also for example if you're tracking a ball it can be like if the window size is too small the region of interest could be inside the ball's entire area or if it's too big it will encompass things in background as well except for the ball so the tracking becomes difficult so the new CamShot algorithm is a modification to that fixed window size Moving on, the step for CamShot algorithm. The probability distribution of the image's region of interest is set to the entire image. So, what we do here is, we set the entire image as our region of interest so that we can step by step modify our window size and consider it on the tracking object. The second step is, the initial location of the mean shift search window needs to be selected. Then the selected location is the target distribution to be tracked. Here, the user can either define it into the code or it can have a real-time interaction option where you can select the image to be tracked and that is set as a search window for the mean shift calculation. The color probability distribution of the region of interest or the ROI centered at the mean shift search window is calculated. Then we iterate the mean shift algorithm to find the centroid of the probability image and then store the zeroth moment and the centroid location. For the next frame or as we can say the all consecutive frames, we do the same and we search the window location at each frame and adjust it according to the translation of the image with the variation of the depth of field or the background image of the thing to be tracked and this iterates over between three four five number steps till we do the tracking here are the details of the calculation of the CamShot algorithm first as we can see here the m00 is the calculation of the intensity at the xy coordinate and the, that's the call the zero at moment of the CamShot algorithm then we go for the first moment here at the x coordinate with x in multiply x coordinate multiplied by the intensity at the x y position and the y coordinate multiplied by the intensity at that same location then we go and we calculate the centroid for the new feature window of the next frame and the last we do is calculate the new window size for each frame where w and l is the width and the length of the window size and it's calculated as a square root of the zero at moment multiplied by a factor that varies with frame to frame and it's adaptive calculation. Now we can talk about a few tracking algorithm types. Methods of tracking can be classified according to the following components. Appearance modeling where we actually select our region of interest by the appearance of the model that we want to track. Then it's the motion modeling where we track images in motion and 
it's on a model where you only track our things that's in motion not static objects then comes the similarity measure where we actually on the consecutive frames we try to measure how similar the region of interest is from the previous one and track things and then comes the search strategy my next algorithm the klt algorithm uses the similarity measure the klt feature point tracking algorithm uses sum of squared intensity differences that's a measure of the similarity that is being used the ssd of the window that needs to be tracked is the measurement criteria to realize the tracking point of the feature points the target of klt tracking algorithm is to calculate the translation distance between the feature points in consecutive frames the calculation is d equal to the delta x and the delta y in the difference that's called the difference in the two x locations in the consecutive frames that's the delta x and in the height the delta y is the difference between the each feature point in consecutive frames and the delta x and the delta y is calculated based on these two equations now uh, the last part of my project is the android application that i made uh, using the face api of the google new build for marshmallow and it is something that i've made functional for the lower versions of the android being the android lollipop or the gingerbread it's called the face tracker the application here is used to track faces over a live video stream and it calculates how wide open or how closed is a person's eye and how happy the person is based on the smile that a person has over the video feed this app i would say is a one of a kind because it's never been done till now where uh, tracking is being done over a live video feed for any android application that we see today in the world that's been released in the google play store or any well third party softwares is just based on a static photography that's for a static image or a photo that we take it's not ever tracked in a real-time live video feed so this is a unique case that i have brought into the android application that i've made now let's go into the details of the apps working the face detection is a process of automatically locating human faces in digital images or a video the detected face is reported at a position with an associated size and orientation uh, now going into the orientation we define it by something called a euler angle it has three coordinates that the x y and z the orientations can vary from a zero degree to a 90 degree rotation but for the face api that google has it has a limitation it only monitors at an euler angle of less than 18 degrees in either of the coordinates that be it x y or z so the app works mostly on a frontal face or a face that's turned just in 18 degree difference from any axis that we take as a reference now how this app actually is working right now once a face is detected it search for landmarks such as eyes and nose and an id is also associated with it the faces appearing in a video for any length of time can be tracked that is the faces are detected in consecutive video frames i can be identified as the being the same person and i would show in my simulation it associates an id with each face and when the face is moved out of the frame it destroys the id and you don't see that id again so when the face again comes back you get a new id to be tracked for and this is the code flow of my app the camera api of the rear facing camera sends an image the camera shows it then goes to the face detector and then we have a multiprocessor that's a part of my code that has all the algorithms that's being used for each face detection and the feature detection of the happiness and the eye open probability and it has a graphic face tracker class for each face that is being there used and hence it's pretty robust and it holds all details of each face and this is not bound by any size so no matter how many faces we have to track in a live video stream 
it is robust enough to handle and it won't actually run out of memory for a data crash. Now coming to the conclusion of the presentation, the captured algorithm, the first algorithm that I talked about works on a base of hue saturation or something we call in simple terms color. It tracks objects based on a single hue. So it has a limitation when a multi-hue detection is required or if the object is not very distinguishable from the background, it fails. Whereas the KLT algorithm doesn't guarantee the corresponding points in subsequent frames as the same feature points as it uses something called the Harris corner detection. As the feature points can vary in position from each frame to frame and matching this translation distance can be a problem. And for the Google Face API that I have used for my app except and the other rest of the APIs, it is bound as I said earlier to the facial orientation. So it is only mostly limited to a frontal view of the face and an occlusion is something that it can handle and a face, it can only observe faces that has a Euler angle of 18 degrees or less for any coordinate that we take as a reference. Now I'll show my simulations. This is the CamShift algorithm code that I've used running the code now. The video that I've used is being used by the MATLAB MathWorks organization. See the huge channel data for the CamShift algorithm it tracks the image and it bounds by a box and the rest hue is being separated. It is pretty robust because it here it's almost non-distinguishable from the background but if we see it has a very slight change in hue from the background and the face. So that I would say is a very robust way of tracking algorithms. And this is the detected face. Now the simulation for the KLT algorithm is the code that has been written. Here also I have been using the video that has been given by the MathWorks MATLAB organization. Now running the code. See this is at the feature point of the detected face. Now as we see the person moving in the video is varying his facial orientation, is varying the depth of field but the region of interest bounded box marked by the yellow rectangle remains static. Though the feature points as we see here by the plus signs in white are moving as the frames are changing. So that shows that the video tracking on the KLT algorithm works perfectly fine. Now I would be showing some screen grabs of the app that I've made because a video simulation of the app would be very small to be seen on a video scale in YouTube. So the, I would be giving up the APK as my submission and that can be installed in any Android phone and need to work if someone wants to verify the app's functionality. Now I'll one by one show the photographs and also the screen grabs of the app. If you can see there are three smiling faces here with the various eye open. If you see this lady's eyes are wide open and we can see the count of the openness of the eye is 1 and 0.99 one being the highest margin and happiness is 0.98 because she's finding pretty wide. But the same goes for this person the eye open probability reduces as the eyes are smaller and the happiness quotient also. As I said, a Euler angle of 18 degrees or less can work. Here, the kid's face is turned at an angle less than an 18 degree of Euler. So, we see the right eye and the left eye open probability and the happiness quotient. I will show a few more cases. Now, if we see these people are not very smiling. This person's, these are the eye open probabilities and the happiness question as he is not smiling is 0.1. And now our president of the United States, Barack Obama, was photographed. I used this also for a simulation. See, he is not very happy. He looks really, really sad. And the happiness question is 0.01. And this person also is not at all happy. And the happiness question is 0.1. And we can see across the three different images. With the amount of eye being opened, we see the various 
IO open probabilities. And I said it can work with multiple faces also. This is the Oscar picture. See, we have so many faces in one frame and it can actually detect all faces. But as I said, an occlusion is something that is not being efficiently handled by the face API of Google. These occluded faces, they're not being cracked. And each face has an ID associated with it and it works with a numerous number of images. And that's all for my presentation. Thank you all for watching.